let us continue with QA session on DTAA. The concept of permanent establishment is one of the most important concept in determining the tax applications in cross border transaction. Examine the significance thereof when such transactions are governed by DTAA. Definitely, because without DTAA, your income will be taxable under section 911, and in section 911, income becomes taxable for foreigners, income becomes taxable in India based on business connection. And business connection is a very wide concept as compared to permanent establishment. Permanent establishment is a fixed place of business unless and until foreigners are having permanent establishment in India. They are not liable to pay tax in India. Okay, so that's of importance, taxable and non-taxable. Okay, but obviously we have discussed this whole theory. You have to, you know, write down maximum possible point that you can write. First, you can write about business connection that is according to Indian income tax business connection concept is there. Then according to duty double a permanent establishment concept is there. Then what is permanent establishment? Only permanent establishment is India. Then only foreigners incomes are taxable in India. So all those points you can mention. Double taxation avoidance agreement generally contain article providing the business income is taxable in a country of residence unless the enterprise has a permanent establishment in a country of source and such income can be attributable to the permanent establishment. As per section 92F, a permanent establishment includes a fixed place of a business through which a business of an enterprise is wholly or partly carried on. A definition of as per the definition to constitute a permanent establishment, there must be a place of business fixed and the business of the enterprise must be carried wholly or partly through that particular uh, activity uh, or uh, location. Section 911 requires existence of business connection for deeming the business income to be accrued or arise in India, which is very wide. DTAA, however, provide that business income is taxable only if there is a permanent establishment. As per section 92, DTAA of the Income Tax Act and uh, Income Tax Act, whichever is more beneficial shall apply. Therefore, the concept of permanent establishment is more important. The concept of permanent establishment is a no narrower than the business connection concept. Therefore, in case where Indian government has entered into DTAA with other country, unless and until the PE test is satisfied, the business income would not be taxable in the source country. And source country means Indian country because the residence country is a foreign, foreign country. However, in the cases are not covered by DTAA. That means if there is no DTAA, then definitely section 911 will apply. And when section 911 apply, the concept of business connection is more important. If business connection is in India, even you don't have the PE in India, it becomes taxable. Okay. An individual residing in India having an income on outside India in a country with which India does not have agreement. There is no agreement exists under section 90. No DTAA. Ask you to examine whether the credit for the tax paid on the foreign income will be allowed again the income tax liability in India. The question is trying to confuse you. Majority of you might give me the answer yes. Credit will be available under section 91. My dear friend section 91 does not give you credit. Credit means it's like a TDS credit. Do you understand? Credit means we give a credit of TDS. That means you can also claim the refund if the tax paid like if TDS deducted is more than your tax liability. That's a credit. We are not going to give you credit. Yeah, what we can give you the relief. Okay, relief is different and credit is different. So they are playing, they are playing with your attention and you know, uh, the understanding of the core law. The assist is the resident in India and accordingly in income accruing and arising to him globally chargeable to tax in India. However, section 91 specify that if a person resident in India has paid tax in any country with which no agreement under section 90 exists, then for the purpose of relief of avoidance of double taxation, a deduction is allowed, deduction, a relief, a deduction is allowed from Indian income tax payable by him of a sum calculated on such a doubly tax income at a rate, at Indian rate of tax or the rate of tax of a foreign country, whichever is lower or at the Indian rate of tax when the both rates of tax are equal. That's a provision. Accordingly, the assessee shall not be given credit, shall not be given the credit of a tax paid in any other country, but shall be allowed a deduction or a relief from Indian income tax payable by him as per the scheme under section 91, read with rule 128 for mat adjustment and all. So that is there rule 128, foreign tax credit rule. Next question. The 
इनकम टैक्स एक्ट 1961 प्रोवाइड फॉर टैक्सेशन ऑफ सर्टेन इनकम ऑन इन इंडिया बाय मिस्टर एक्स अ नॉन रेसिडेंट अ डबल टैक्सेशन अवॉइडेंस अग्रीमेंट व्हिच अप्लाइज टू एक्स प्रोवाइड फॉर टैक्सेशन ऑफ सच इनकम इन द कंट्री ऑफ रेसिडेंस सो व्हाट से इंडियन इनकम टैक्स से इट इज टैक्सेबल इन द कंट्री ऑफ द सोर्स एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू डीटी डबल ए इट इज टैक्सेबल द सेम इनकम इज टैक्सेबल ओनली इन द कंट्री ऑफ द रेसिडेंस is mr x liable to pay tax on such income earned by him in india obviously no we are not going to take tax if, because the dt double a exist in these two countries whichever is more beneficial he has to apply section 90 sub section 2 makes it clear that where central government has entered into double taxation avoidance agreement with a country outside india then in respect of the assessee to whom such agreement apply the provision of act shall apply to the extent which are more beneficial to the assessee so this paragraph was needed in the answer this means the dt double a has been entered where dt double a has been entered the assessee can opt to be governed by the provisions of dt double a provision of income tax the provisions are beneficial as compared to income tax act however as per section 90 sub section 4 the assessee in order to claim relief under the agreement he has to obtain the tax residency certificate you must be remember this compliance procedure that if you want to take benefit of dt double you have to you have to give trc because then only we will understand that you are a genuine resident of that foreign country further he has to provide following document in the form 10f so lot of information they are asking you to give status whether it, it is a individual ssc company or firm pan of the assessee if allotted if he is having indian pan nationality whether it is indian national or foreign national or if it is indian incorporated company or foreign incorporated company assessee's tax identification number in the country or a specific specified territory of the resident like in india we are having pan in foreign country they may have some unique identification number or tax identification number that number we want so if they don't have the tax identification number then they might have something called unique identification number or you know citizenship number something like that like we are having aadhar in india foreign country may also have some number we want that number period for which residential status mentioned in the certificate so we just need to how many days he was stayed in that particular country address of the assess in that particular country but then you will say so we have already given you tax residency certificate why are you asking us this additional information additional information is required only if this information are not mentioned in trc okay if all this information are already mentioned in trc then this paragraph says you don't have to give it again and you know that in supreme court uh, supreme court in the case of uh, kulandan chetiar not important you just remember supreme court has already decided this that in the case of any conflict between provisions of dt double a an income tax act provision of dt double a can override the income tax act so this is the overriding power given to dt double a one more point you should mention here that dt double a can override the income tax act but not provisions of the gar okay not provisions of the gar gar overrides dt double a therefore <coughs> he is not liable to pay tax on income earned by him in india provided he submit the tax residency certificate obtained from the government of the other country and provide such other document and information as may be prescribed so definitely he doesn't have to pay tax in india he can pay tax in the so residence country not in the source country according to dt double a conditions should be followed by him that uh, he has to give the trc thank you